Hello everyone, welcome back to Altium Academy. I'm your host, Zach Peterson. Today, we are gonna be talking about EMI filters on power supplies. We got a great question from someone on LinkedIn asking about input stage EMI filters. I'm gonna show you some circuit topologies and which different circuits you should place on different stages of an AC to DC and DC to DC converter. Let's go ahead and jump on the board and get started. Before we get started, let's take a look at that viewer question. Farogh writes, Hi Zach, I love your videos and keep up your good work. I have a request. Please make a video to explain how to design and choose values for input staging EMI filter for a 24 volt supply that's going to a switching regulator. So there are multiple things to address in that question, such as choosing values for different circuit elements in an EMI filter circuit, and then of course the construction and topology of the EMI filter circuit itself. I'm gonna focus on the topology in EMI filter circuits in this video, and then you'll see some different examples of where these different components have to appear in an EMI filter circuit. So let's take a look at this starting from an AC input, and then we can look at what happens as we get to each successive power stage in this power supply. So when we start with an AC input, we usually first go to some elements for circuit protection, such as a fuse, and then it's quite common to see a metal oxide varistor here. This then connects back to the DC side. So this is our line connection, and this is our neutral connection, and then there could also be an earth connection that exists elsewhere, and I'll show you where that connects momentarily. Next thing that you might see coming off of this metal oxide varistor is a current limiting resistor, and then you start to see reactive components like your chokes and your capacitors. So then coming off of this current limiting resistor, you can have a capacitor here, and then this is where you might start to see your first choke. This is normally a differential mode choke, and then this is normally paired up with an X-class capacitor. Next, after the differential mode choke, we can start looking at common mode noise. One way that we might do that is to then do a common mode choke right here. And here I'm, of course, drawing in just two coupled inductors, and we wanna mark the polarity here to indicate that this is a common mode choke. And then after this, you may see a couple of Y capacitors here, which then further filter out the common mode noise. And then this is where you get back to your earth connection or your chassis connection. I have the ground connection going all the way across here between this node and then our earth connection back to the input. Now, if you don't have this earth connection like this, you may not need to use these two capacitors like this. Instead, what you could do is you could just bypass this and put a single capacitor here that then matches this capacitor. And then maybe you might remove the differential mode choke or move it back. Now, the point is that you can use this common mode choke to form a Pi filter by using this capacitor and possibly another capacitor right here at this point. So this allows you to address all the different types of noise that might come in from your AC input and then eventually go down to your output where you're gonna power your DC, AC to DC regulator. Now these differential mode chokes and common mode chokes are available in a variety of sizes. Let's jump onto Octopart real quick and see what kind of components are gonna be available. Now when you hop onto Octopart, you can just search for common mode choke and you'll see several different options. You'll notice here that some of the first ones that come up are of course Pulse. Pulse makes a lot of different magnetic components and you see some other options here like from TDK. Now you'll notice here that we have an inductance value here and then we have a current rating right here and then a resistance value. So you wanna select this such that the inductance value that you have here is essentially creating a, enough of a roll off in your transfer function such that you create the filtering curve that you want. Here you of course have this current value which is a current limit and then here this is just a series resistance for the wiring that makes up this component. You can also search for differential mode chokes or just differential choke. And you'll see here we have some options that come up. Differential chokes are basically like big inductors and they're chosen pretty much the same way. You wanna select the inductance such that it creates the filtering or transfer function curve that you want. And then they have the same kind of ratings. There's a current rating and then there will be a uh, equivalent contact or wiring resistance that you need to include if you're gonna run SPICE simulations with these components. So that's a little bit of short guidance on how to select the chokes that you might use on this input stage for this EMI filter. And 
we need these chokes to be paired up with these different capacitors such that we only allow power from this AC source to get down to the output of this filter. So if you're in the residential domain, you're gonna be dealing with 60 hertz or 50 hertz. If you are working in the aerospace domain, you're gonna be working at 400 hertz. And no matter which frequency you're working at, you just need to pair these up such that the transfer function looking this direction in this filter circuit allows this power in and essentially nothing else. The other reason that we want these capacitors is of course, if there's any return current associated with an EMI going back this direction. If we do this, we basically create a complete closed loop through these capacitors and it limits this current to existing only in this circuit. If we didn't have these capacitors, that EMI return current is gonna to have to flow back along this cable that forms our AC input. That's usually a bad thing because then it can radiate and that's something that we don't want. That same point would also apply if we had our two capacitors here and we had our earth connection. And then remember we would also have our earth connection over here at this input. When we have this type of system, what happens when we get to the output? Now, when we look at the output, we need to consider whether or not it's isolated and then how we filter out the DC that's coming off of that output. So let's take a look at that next. Now we've looked at the AC input to our regulator. So next what we wanna do is look at what happens from the output of our regulator going to the next power stage in our system. So in this example, and specifically in the question that was asked, we had a DC-DC converter that would then output, for example, 24 volts, and then that's eventually gonna go over here to, let's say, a switching regulator. So, in this example, what we then have to put in between these two things in order to tamp down on EMI really depends on, of course, the external circuits and then the frequency range that we need to target. The other thing that we have to look at is whether or not this is an isolated AC to DC converter. And if it is, for example, a flyback converter, we would then have to deal with the isolation aspect. So first we have our inputs from our previous stage. We'll just call this VN plus and then VN minus. And then we have our outputs here. Now, typically what we have to do from a DC to DC converter like this is to then first add some output capacitance. Once we add in enough output capacitance, we can then start to put a filter circuit in between these two regulators if we need it. The easiest type of filter circuit to put in here is of course just a Pi filter. So we would wanna put in an inductor here and then we'll put a capacitor here. And then we might even put, for example, a TVS diode here in order to suppress any ESD. Now, since we have a Pi filter here, we of course then need to select this such that we get enough roll off in the transfer function to provide filtering for this 24 volt output. So this 24 volt output could have some noise on it. We wanna select the L and the C values such that we are cutting off at a low enough frequency and then filtering out all that EMI. The other point to consider when selecting the L and the C values is that it really depends on what this is connected to. If this is connected to something where it sees a low impedance or low Z, looking this direction through the switching regulator and then out to whatever our load is, you could then get some peaking in the transfer function. So you could basically create an underdamped transient response when this thing starts switching on and then providing power. That is an issue where sometimes you may need to add another set of capacitors down here at the output of that switching regulator in order to tamp down on that noise. And sometimes you may even need to intentionally add just a little bit of resistance here on these capacitors in order to tamp down on the transient response from this filter. Adding these little bitty resistors here is really something that you need to determine from simulation because it slows down the turn on time, but it does very nicely dampen the transient response from this stage looking out to the load. Typically though, this is not the approach that's taken. Typically what someone will do is they will just beef up the capacitance on the output, and then they may beef up the input capacitance here to the switching regulator. One thing you could do is you could of course cascade these filter sections. So instead of just having this capacitor and then this inductor and this capacitor, you could really have a pair of capacitor and inductor stages here. So for example, you could have this cascaded as I've drawn here. 
Here, you've formed a higher order filter circuit. So you've got an L1 and possibly an L2, and then we'll call this a C1 and a C2. And so you can choose these values such that you get even steeper roll off in the transfer function curve if you need it. Now, this is another case where you should simulate it based on the expected load at the output and the transfer through this regulator. The reason for that is you don't want to create an undesired transient response when you have a low load condition on the output. Now, there's another solution that you can find that will actually take this and put it in a highly integrated package because there are higher order filters that are available as components that you can just put onto the board and you can put them right between these two switching regulators. So let's get back onto Octopart and I'll show you an example. All right, folks, I'm back on Octopart and I just wanna show you this particular component that I've used in some other projects. This component is a higher order filter and if you just click on the data sheet here on Octopart, you'll be able to see how this component works. Now this component is a prepackaged higher order filter with pretty high insertion loss above DC. So it's specifically meant to be used between two regulators where it's filtering the DC output from one regulator and then providing DC power to another regulator. So you can see right here in the insertion loss curve that we get really high roll off all the way up to one gigahertz. So this particular example is a really good option if you want to have a highly integrated solution. Now the package isn't very small as you can see down here from the packaging drawing. However, it's a very convenient component to use. So I always recommend and considering something like this when you're designing a power system. Now I have this component in an example circuit right here in Altium Designer so you can see how it's used. So this is just one example where we are taking power coming in from a four pin connector and then we have some bulk capacitance here. This capacitance is provided with some ceramic capacitors at one microfarad. You see the 100 volt rating here. So this is gonna be suitable for about 50 volts or less. And then this is being fed in directly to our filter. And then we have a filtered output that is also connected to this, this capacitor. So this filtered output would then go to all of your other components or regulators to supply DC power. So now we've looked at the AC portion to our initial AC to DC converter, and then the output from the AC to DC converter going to the switching regulator. So the next question of course is, what about the output from the switching regulator? Like I said earlier, we normally start beefing up the capacitance on the output with some discrete capacitors in order to provide noise suppression and ripple suppression. That noise suppression also helps with any conducted EMI because that EMI that might be received in this portion of the circuit can then of course flow through to the output of our switching regulator and so we need some way to deal with that the simplest solution is usually capacitance, or you could start adding in these LC filter stages as well. But like I said earlier, just make sure to simulate all of that first in SPICE. That way you can determine if you have an undesired transient response, and then you can look at what you can do to dampen that response with additional damping and resistance, or by selecting some different component values. Now, the last thing I wanna to touch on in these circuits is what happens if these regulators are isolated. Now, if these regulators are isolated, typically what you want to do is then connect a Y-class capacitor across the two grounds between these two uh, portions of the system. So this would basically be like our ground, we'll call it ground secondary, and then here we would have ground primary. Now, this Y-type capacitor needs to be chosen such that it is much larger than the capacitance across this isolation barrier that's internal to this component. So as long as this Y-type capacitor is large enough, it will then provide a path for high frequency noise to get back to the primary side of the system and provide a complete current loop. You would wanna do the same thing over here if this switching regulator were also isolated. So here we could have a different Y-type capacitor connected to these two grounds. So here this might be GND secondary, and then we'll call this uh, GND out, for example. I've just made up some net names here, but hopefully you get the idea. We would have this Y-type capacitor also selected such that it is much larger than the capacitance across this barrier inside this component, and it provides the exact same function. 
any high frequency noise on this side can then get back over to this side and perform a complete circuit and that way it minimizes radiation away from the system. Thanks for watching this video, everybody. Make sure to keep sending us your comments and questions. And of course, if you find me on LinkedIn, feel free to send me a question. We might just turn it into a video. Make sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and of course, don't forget to call your fabricator, folks.